Hello everyone and welcome to Heart and Hand Rangers podcast. This is your extra show for the week and my name is Cameron Bell. I'm your host as always for our extra show and um, I'm going to be honest with you, the sun is shining today. Uh, It is the end of what has been a fairly terrible season but I've got two separate reasons to be so happy today because of my two guests. First of all, the the, well she's just come back from the sun and she's definitely brought it with her, the lovely Marina Banatine. Marina, lovely to have you on. It's lovely to be on. Thank you for asking me. And uh, her partner in crime, Caroline Morrison. Caroline, um, I I said to you I wanted to bring you on because you're the only podcaster that we have who could very closely emulate Todd Cantwell's hair. Thank you very much for providing that. (laughs) I know. I'm a bit of an emotional support friend as well for Marina because she's going through a tough time, which I know we'll come on to speak about. (laughs) We will come on to speak about it because uh, Marina is the woman in black. She's dressed in the funeral shroud because uh, her favourite ever Rangers player, um, Alan McGregor, has hung up his gloves. We will come on to that in due order. Um, Ladies, I want to talk to you a little bit around uh, probably what I thought was quite an interesting team selection, first of all, because I believe, and, and, and maybe it's been discussed quite openly I think in terms of what we were going to do with those guys on Tuesday who were announced that they were going to be leaving obviously for anyone who doesn't know or you know hasn't seen it um Philip Hollander, Ryan Kent, Alan McGregor, Scotty Arfield and Alfredo Morelos were all announced as confirmed as leaving the club at the end of the season um and there was some debate Marina about how they were going to try and give the guys a send-off now there's loads of conversation out there about who merits a send off, you know, what, what's what been happening about, you know, this season and people not applying themselves, all of that kind of stuff. I totally understand all of that. I don't really want to rehash loads of that because I think we'll be pretty revisionist in time. I think people who may have a little bit of a sour feel towards certain players, it will probably start to soften over time. And then, then I think, like, you know, we'll look at it through a different optic. We, we, we usually do that with most players. But, um, Interesting to see that within the certainly the starting lineup, I was not expecting Alan McGregor to start. I wasn't expecting Alfredo Morelos to be involved. I thought maybe they might do something of you know the the the, the lap at the end of the game or whatever. I just didn't expect to see them play. Um, were you surprised by that? Did you think that Robbie McCrory might keep his place? Hearts had something to play for, so you would have thought it would have been quite a competitive game. Yes, and it wasn't too far into the game um, that I, I think the the decision, like everyone was, anyone who wasn't doubting the decision, um, then maybe had their doubts as well. I I just assumed it would have been like the the cup final last year with McGregor getting subbed on at the end, um, and probably the same for Morelos. I think that I don't think that either of them should have started. I know it was partly their night, but. Um, it's important. I guess it's only one game and it doesn't make any much of a difference. Um, it was the only pride to play for, but no, I would, and I love them both, but I wouldn't have started either of them. I'd probably have been more likely to start Arfield if any of them. Caroline, um, Marina has changed. Let's be honest, because we would not expect it to listen to a heart and hand pod with Marina Bannatyne on it saying that Alan McGregor and Alfredo Morelos should not have started. Um, I am stunned. You have turned the corner, Marina. Very well done. But Caroline, I think that all joking aside, uh, I think Marina's hit the nail on the head. That's kind of what I expected too, right? I thought that you know, we would go with a, a you know pretty much a, a, a consistent lineup. We would get the guys on when they kind of, the 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 game was done and dusted. The competition was kind of done and dusted, and we would give them a you know ten minutes. Here's your you know your sub. You get the the stand innovation and all that, Chris. I just didn't expect them to start. That was all. Yeah, I can't honestly say that I expected them to start either, but I also wasn't that surprised that they did, only because he has said in the last couple of press conferences how hard Morelos is working in training. I know he did say before that (laughs) when Morelos came on as a sub, it was a negative impact, but he kind of after that opened the door up a little bit, I thought, and said that he was working hard and the relationship was good. And I think for McGregor, um, it's just, I think, knowing the professional he is and how much he puts into, um, you know, effort on and off the field. I'm sure it was just that recognition of this is your last time to play at Ibrox. 
in a competitive match. I know we've got the um, testimonial coming up and I think it's just that reward for here you go. Here's your chance to to pull on the gloves properly for, for one last time. If I'm honest, I was probably more surprised to see Kamara start, I'll be honest. I was hoping instead that we might see a Lowry, for example. Um, we really now only have just the one match where we, we're going to give some meaningful time potentially to some of the younger um, players which have been making that kind of move from the, the development team or B team, sorry, to um, the squad. And I really love for, for them, at least now in the last game, to get a bit of time. Well, listen, that was exactly what I was about to say. You've you've read the script because I, th- I thought Glenn Kamara was an interesting com- uh, inclusion. Um, nothing announced about his future, but I think that there's definitely some question marks around it. I don't want to put words in the manager's mouth because he you know, talks enough for himself anyway. But the, the interesting thing to me within that, Caroline, I'll stick, stick with you in that, was it probably felt a little bit like as if this was going to be his last opportunity to start a game at Ibrox. Those have been few and far between in, in recent games for sure. Um, I, I, I think Glenn Kamara, I think, you know, we, we, we've we we've got some some decent value out of him at times. Of course, everybody talks about the price tag. Of course, they do understand that. I try and always steer away from that because I don't think you can judge players by the price that clubs deem uh, you know, sufficient to pay for them because everyone knows that 50 grand was a steal. But I try and do the same thing for other players who obviously cost significantly more. But uh, it wasn't really pulling up trees last night. I think is a nice way to say that. Yeah, and sadly, it's what we've come to expect. We know that there's a player there. We've seen a really impressive player there. It's just so rare that that player comes out, and the rest of the time he just is quite a frustrating character to watch. Probably because we know what he can offer and what his potential is, what he does on the international stage, what he's done for us in Europe. Um, But I think it's more of a, like a lot of players in the squad, a mentality thing. Um, I think he thought he was getting a move before it fell through or it didn't quite materialise. And I think his mind's not been here. Same as what we've probably seen with Morelos and Kent. Um, And it's a stinking attitude, if I'm honest. It it feels like it's just um, going through the motions. So I think you're probably right. Him and a few others, at least one or two others, um, are likely to also be going elsewhere. Scott Wright, I know, being spoken about. And they're not likely now to get um, any significant farewell from the fans. Uh, But I think the ones that we really wanted to have that moment with and show that recognition for in the way that we did last night, we've done. So um, in other ways, like online, we can have a nice little farewell to any players that are still to go uh, from the club on Twitter. And I think that'd be plenty. Yeah, and and listen, Marina, let's talk a little bit around uh, the start of the game because it was an absolute farce. Now, there's something to this where I think that this game felt a little bit to me like, you know, when you were in the final day, uh, uh, you know, the school school semester and, you know, you see the teacher wheeling the telly into the room because, let's (laughs) face it, you could have brought your own videos in and all that kind of stuff and, when I was a wee guy at school, you could bring in your computer system. I'm really old. Mine was like a Nintendo or a Super Nintendo, but that was like the whole feel of the game. Hearts did have something to play for because they uh, they obviously still had the European spot within the uh, within the range, um, and pretty much exactly the opposite of what I think every single Rangers fan in Ibrox wanted for Alan McGregor to concede a goal within probably about the first 120 seconds of the game. A real, real epitome of how this season has gone, I think, this goal, because it was a farce from beginning to end. There was a VAR check, which um, it did take its time. I think, you know, several of us thought it could have been for offset, it could have been for handball, because um, obviously you, you don't get a chance to check the replay. Eventually, um, Beaton decides to give it, uh, following advice from the VAR team. And uh, Rangers are a goal down, like I say, pretty much within the first kick of the game. I'm certain... Alan McGregor would have been feeling at that point. Oh, no doubt. I, it's hard because I did feel for McGregor and I certainly didn't want his last job or his last task as a, a Rangers player to be um, picking the ball out the net as well at the, the other end of the game. But yeah, here we go. I think last night the whole match just summed up our season in 90 minutes to be honest and um, the silly mistakes the stupid goals um a lot of shots on target and not not converting them 
so yeah it was pretty much what we've seen all season but yeah what a start and I did feel for McGregor but at the same time I guess it kind of shows us <laughs> it, it, anything that we're oh I don't, I don't even think see even the most hardened McGregor fan like myself um I I was surprised that he signed another on for another year this year and I, I did think it was time for him to go it's it's not, not a slight on him. He's been fantastic throughout his career and old age, or not old age, he's, I'm only a couple of years younger than him. It, it happens to us all and especially in, in his job, it does have an impact and it's just catching up with him and he's not the player that he was. Um, I'm sure he wouldn't have done that 10 years ago, but the mistakes are happening and they've been happening a lot this season, unfortunately. Yeah, and I think, and Marine, I'll stick with you on this because let's face it, again, like I say, a huge fan of Alan McGregor and rightly so because I think he he is arguably Rangers' greatest ever goalkeeper. I, I think that that is a very, very, you know, strong possibility. People, you know, would, would agree with that opinion. However, um, it is fair to say that, uh, you know, he, he, he will have been disappointed with his performances this season. Let's, you know, we call a spade a spade. We'll mm-hmm. always be honest in terms of where that, uh, where that has to, to really be an, an honest opinion. I think... For me, the between last year and this year, there really has been a thought process in his head of, you know, if I can't do it, then I'm not signing on. And a, a point I made on our Patreon uh, network uh, was really uh, centred around Alan McGregor wouldn't have signed another contract, in my opinion, had he been offered it at the end of this season, for whatever reason, right, if he felt that he wasn't able to perform and he wasn't able to contribute. And I think he, he did that last season because he felt he was still there. And I think Marina, as you rightly say about it, you know, time catches up with us all. However you want to dress up, it, it, he, he's got to the stage where he knows that's enough. Do you know what I mean? Like, he, he knows he, he can't be as great as he was. And he, he doesn't want to be the person in the team that that, that potentially could, uh, could, could cost his points. Yeah, I I think like he's probably his harsh his own harshest critic, and it's not been well apart from last night. Um, but there were mitigating circumstances. I um, I don't even know if he he was supposed to be your first choice keeper this season. If it hadn't been for the old firm game with McLaughlin, things might have been different. Um, so yeah, you you don't really know, but. I'm, I'm sure he's absolutely kicking himself and I'm sure he's been just as harsh on himself as, as we are being on him. I, I, absolutely. I totally agree with that. Um, some, some interesting periods of play throughout the game, Caroline, after Hearts went ahead. As I said before, obviously there was something for them to be able to try and play in it. There is something I want to call out here uh, before we get on to uh, what turned out to be the equaliser for Todd Cantwell. Um, I... Um, as you guys both know, and anyone listening to, to any previous shows, I'm a qualified referee. Um, I, I have not refereed at any significant level, so please don't think that I'm claiming to. However, I have to talk about the performance of John Beaton last night. Um, we have discussed previously on some of the shows regarding how easy it seems to be uh, to target Todd Cantwell, to be able to <laughs> borderline assault him, um, before eventually a foul gets given for him. Uh, we spoke before, and I think David and I spoke with Colin on the flagship last Monday around, it seems very, very easy to not give a foul for Todd Cantwell and to encourage him to be able to try and get up. Uh, managers of opposition teams are talking about, you know, the fact that Cantwell seems to go down easily. And I think uh, it's beginning to drive a narrative that we absolutely have to stamp out as a club. And I know that the manager was asked about it in the post-match press conference last night, and he said he knows where that narrative is coming from. Make it that what you will. But I thought some of the treatment dished out to Todd Cantwell last night was absolutely ridiculous. He actually put up a post on his Instagram about a tackle that was made on him. He wasn't given the foul. He was accused of diving, apparently, by some pundit. Um, and yet there is a, a, a red gash across the top of his thigh. I'm not suggesting for a minute, Caroline, that we have to give players preferential treatment in terms of protecting them. But I think that you can't just not give a foul against a player because of the fact that, um, you know, it, it, it's a player for a certain club. Because that is bias, right? That is the definition of treating a player with, uh, you know, some degree of prejudice. 
it, it, it was ridiculous what was happening to Todd Cantwell last night. It was, and it was absolutely systematic because it was different players at different points taking on the role of leaving a little bit on Todd Cantwell. They obviously identified beforehand, given his current form, what a threat he was going to be, and they're, they're right to do that because, you know, evidently he was a threat. Um, but he deserves more protection from the referees. To furthermore turn it round and say that either he goes down too softly or he, you know, is looking for fouls where there aren't any. He he had, in that last game where you'll have people say afterwards, you know, he, I don't like to use the word dive, but definitely went down too easily. He had two hands basically dragging him down. And it's it's laughable that anyone could possibly comment on that. I think I saw a comparison. That I can't remember for the life of me who on Twitter posted the comparison, but it was of Jota genuinely, diving in the box to try and win a penalty on Wednesday night um, or what would have been sorry the weekend um, and the same language isn't used even when that's actually the case and no contact's made contact is actually made then on Todd Cantwell and he has every right to go down and this type of suggestion is cropping up so you can only come to the conclusion then that it's driven by an agenda and it shouldn't happen the referees should be above any kind of pre-match suggestion from any corner or any party over the intentions of a player and they should simply judge the game on what they're viewing but we know that these things do tend to to creep into the back of their minds as they're refereeing the game particularly for some referees so I love that the club that Beal came out and spoke quite firmly about it and I love that Cantwell backed that up with the kind of photo evidence of there was definitely contact um and hopefully that type of response is going to dampen down some of that chat from the usual corners. Um, Marina, I think Caroline's right. I think the only <laughs> the only part of that, however, is that we also need to make sure that we're consistent with that. Now, I'm not saying that we need to mention it in every single press conference and been able to do that, but I think we have to respond because when we think about one of your favourite players that you mentioned earlier on, Alfredo Morelos, he was refereed to a different standard. And I do think that, you know, whilst I will never find it acceptable, because I think it's borderline xenophobia at times in terms of how Alfredo Morelos was treated in this country, there is an element to this where we have to take the responsibility to make sure that people don't uh, get away with thinking that it's open season on Rangers players. Um, two things will happen on the back of that. Um, Todd Cantwell is going to take a serious injury um, because, again, like you see, he will not stop in terms of committing into tackles, being able to do his absolute best. That's why he is already becoming a fan favourite. Um, and the second thing that will happen is it's going to make it difficult for us to be able to recruit significant talent which I think everyone has agreed is an absolute must for this uh, this upcoming transfer window, if they think that they're going to be coming up to Scotland and basically having the shit kicked out of them. It's not good enough. And even away from a Rangers optic, it just reflects so badly on Scottish football that we're still in this kind of archaic, you know, ridiculous um, mindset of the only way I can stop this guy is to bring him down. Just be better. Just try and raise the level. It, it's really disappointing. Exactly, as as you've said, it, it doesn't like it could put talent off, um, but also the Scottish teams aren't improving. Like their football's not improving if that's the tactic that they have to rely on. I thought um, it was quite interesting. I'd said to I think the Heart and Hand ladies before um, that Campwell is the new Morelos. I think it was after Water Bottle Gate, um, and that was a treatment by the press. He's the new Morelos, he's the target, he's our best player and they've, they've singled him out to target what, whatever. And it's the same, the treatment with the referees and the other teams. Um, and it's just, so it was interesting when, when Beale pointed that out as well. Um, Darren, who I sit beside at the games, he said last night about Morelos that he, he wasn't sure if maybe the press and everything got him towards the end because he thinks that Morelos wasn't the same after he sent it off at Parkhead. And you you don't know and we hopefully and we hear the same thing again rangers need to call it out we need to we've been saying this like i think since <laughs> since i started supporting rangers but hopefully the difference this time with cantwell and morelos is as caroline said it's good that he pointed it out that he put it in social media so cantwell obviously speaks the language a bit better 
um, and he's not a boy so far away from home. So, yeah, hopefully they've got a tougher fight in their hands this time if they want to pick on Campwell. Yeah, and listen, I totally agree with that because I think, I mean, I, I absolutely echo it. I think that he did exactly the right thing, been able to call it out. But also what I think is as well is that it shows his spirit. Yeah. It's, it's just the same off the field uh, in terms of, you know, he wants to win. He wants to 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 play great football, which he does. And I think, Marina, you saw that with what I thought was just a phenomenal finish um, from a poke ball through um, bearing down on goal. And it, it looks awkward in terms of the way how he hits it, but just kisses the inside of, of the left hand post. We equalise. And I, I, the only thing I enjoyed better than the goal was Alfredo Morelos running straight over to the Hearts bench uh, to give them some typical Alfie patter. Um, it, do you know what I mean? It's something that we're going to remember him for, you know? Yeah, if we didn't get an Alfie goal, we at least got uh, some of his character that way. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so we go in, it's one all, so that's great. So we think to ourselves, well, you know, what, what will we take from next? Uh, and Caroline, um, the answer was quick to come because almost right at the beginning of the second half, Fashion Sakala uh, takes advantage of um, some pretty poor defending from Hearts. Um, I'm going to say it was an interesting finish, uh, but there's an element to this where maybe, you know, we do criticise Sakala a lot. I do hear it in the stands. I understand why. I, I get the whole thing. Um, he has to be in that position to seize the opportunity to be able to jump on the mistake. Uh, the finish is a little bit rusty, but at the same time, you know, we'll allow him out. I think, I think we kind of get it. Um, and it's just, it's, it's, it's a two goal swing within a matter of minutes, uh, either side of half time. Now Rangers are winning and uh, we start playing uh, some, some lovely, some lovely football as well. Yeah, it just gives you that breathing space. Uh, the first half was not pretty. It was frustrating, in fact, especially losing the goal that we did, but not particularly playing that well. And um, funnily enough, Todd Cantwell is exactly the person that you want that um, end of the first half chance to fall to, and he did take it very well. Um, con <laughs> commercially, Sakala, when he gets that opportunity from another little mistake, you don't expect <laughs> anymore that Sakala is going to be able to convert that, but to... To be fair to him, he actually kept his composure and um, he he forced really that error. That error, you know, he he made sure that that goal was going in. I think obviously it did come off the the Hearts player in the end, but it was going in regardless. So good for him. I'm really delighted for him. They got a goal. He's had a tough few weeks, and again, it might not be that his future is at Rangers. I I, I don't think so to be honest. Um, but. If, if that's the case and he leaves uh, with with a goal in his last game at Ibrox, then fantastic. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that, I think, Marina, because I, I don't know if he will be in at Ibrox you know, next season. We'll just have to wait and see. But I know for a fact, because you are a wee soft soap, you would have loved Sakala's uh, Scott Arfield tribute in his celebration. Oh, I know I did. It was... Not a great night for football last night, but it was certainly an emotional, uh, an emotional night. All the things. So yeah, Sakala loves a wee tribute, doesn't he, with these celebrations? So that was really, really heartwarming. Yeah, it's I just guess nice. it was Morelos as well because he had. Do you have a wee knee slide and then obviously the salute? So he managed to to kind of pay tribute to them both. Yeah, like he's, 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 he's just he's just stealing everybody's celebration. <laughs> Keep moving his goals that as well. I'm amazed that he didn't go back into you know the John Claude Darshville prolonged you know piece on that as well. I mean like when he used to do his uh, his goal celebration too. But yeah, okay, it was nice. I think uh, we spoke. Um, on the flagship on Monday around the togetherness of the team coming for Yanis Hadji's goal. And I think it's nice seeing some of that within the group and stuff, because you get to remember, no one wants to see this season ever again, right? No one's going to be watching it in a, in a highlight reel. But we do have to remember that, you know, these guys didn't deliberately go out to play poorly or to see where we were going to end up. I, I genuinely don't believe that. And I don't think anyone listening does. Um, but they are a group of guys who have worked together, who, who see each other every day, um, th there's clearly some degree of closeness within the group, so I think it was interesting to see that tribute, Caroline, because um, you know they are gonna, you know, depending on who stays, who goes, or whatever, it's still a period of change, right? And for a lot of you know workplaces and people involved within that, it can still be pretty unsettling. Um, 
And again, as we've already discussed, the way how the game started was absolutely not in the game plan. So, yeah, I think it was quite nice just to see that. It's a good wee, a good wee send off for uh, for a couple of the guys, and it shows some of the some of the closeness of the group. Yeah, it was an amazing turnaround. Like you said, you know, in quick succession, either side of, of half time, and it went from quite a frustrating evening to actually quite enjoyable. <laughs> the sun's out, um, and everything's right again. Uh, in typical Rangers fashion, we made things um, difficult, and of course, it didn't end the way that you'd want it to. But I think, yeah, the, the season has ended the way it has. I think, although it's frustrating that the game ended in a draw, we we've all just, I think, come to our wits' end with this season. So the fact that we can <laughs> close out the game, uh, say our goodbyes and our thank yous to the players we know are leaving, and move on. Uh, everyone that I've spoken to is just basically counting down to to the start of next season and hopefully atoning for some of the um the disappointments we've had this season yeah and and, and you know i think that's fair we uh, we did see some changes melina um I, and i think that, and this is this is something that I, I really did enjoy and i thought a nice touch by the manager as well when we uh, we saw scott arfield being able to come on um a, a tremendous servant to the angels it has to be said i know that there's going to be points where we say you know he was he was an impact sub he, he including this season has made key differences to games um he scored some really important goals for us as well it cannot be forgotten about um but i think it was really nice to hear the stadium been able to to, to to acknowledge him um some great acknowledgement as well from the union bears for, for scotty arfield and, and alfredo morelos in terms of the banners that they displayed and stuff just a real, uh, just a, a, a nice moment. I think that you know, Arfield will remember. I, I would, I would encourage people to think about, you know, whether Arfield or not, you know, was your particular cup of tea or what have you. You know, he, he was a very, he's a very nice person. Does a lot for, you know, Poppy Scott. Does a lot for charities and stuff. He always used to auction off his his uh, jumper from um, remembrance games, but obviously he had uh, the, the the Poppy design on it and stuff as well. Um, really, really well respected around the club. I think one of Gerard's trusted lieutenants when he really had that framework uh, within the within the group. Um, and just, Medina, a lovely moment, I thought. You would have been back in tears at this point again as well, I'm assuming. I did cry last night, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. I, I don't know anyone who doesn't like Scott Arfield. Like, I think most people um or maybe it's just anyone I speak to Aberdeen but, fans oh well yeah <laughs> Within the sport, and it's, it's as you see he's a lovely person and he has been a great servant um he he, he might not be as glamorous um as Morelos but then I think fans especially now are very divided on Morelos and I'm sure at the moment people are thinking more, more fondly of, of Arfield um, so yeah, it was good that they got their tributes, and I think those three and Kent, um, especially, they're the players that kind of brought us out of the light or brought us out of the dark. Even um, like we went through some tough times with them, and like so many celebrations with them. So it's there's a lot of emotional baggage, and that's that's well, that's what I'm blaming my tears on. <laughs> No, I, I get that. I get that. All joking aside, I think one of the things that's been really interesting, we talk to people about Scott Arfield is, in my lifetime supporting Rangers, I think that we love a flair player. We love a player who can, you know, turn a game on its head and stuff. But equally, Caroline, we love a player who is is has got that industry, he's got that engine, will work hard, cover every blade of grass. I look at guys like Shirley Cole, you know, Gattuso, guys within that mould who, you know, they're real proper workers. And in some games and in some teams and in some squads, those guys are as important, if not more so, the, than your, your flair players and, you know, the guys who have got all the, the wonderful touches and stuff. Sometimes that, 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 you know, that bit of industry is needed in order to be able to try and get a result over the line. And there's been some incredibly successful Rangers teams who have been, you know, inclusive of that, uh, that hard working ethos. Um, and some examples within that as well, and I think Arfield for me fits within that uh, within that frame as well. Absolutely, I think it, it, as well endeavours a really big part of it. With some players, they might not have the technical ability of others, but if you can see how hard they're working, especially for the team, you will more than likely forgive any shortcomings in skill. 
And don't get me wrong, Scott Arfield is, is a very skilled player, but I think more so I appreciated him for how much he brought with energy and determination to the squad. And even when we only saw him come on um, as a substitute, you just had a little bit of faith based on on numerous occasions that he could come on and change a game. And we saw, you know, most recently, was it the semi-final or the final last year of the, the Cup? Um, you know, he, he's a real difference maker. He can come on and absolutely change a game. And we saw that many times throughout his career. And he, I didn't expect him to get as as large a kind of applause and recognition last night, but he 100% deserves it. I was really pleased to see that. Um, and he's probably the one I've seen most commentary on social media to say, I would have kept him actually. <laughs> you know, there's um, there's not too many people saying you should have kept Kent Halland or, you know, certainly not McGregor or um, Morelos, but quite a few people have been saying, I would have kept Arfield for, for one more year even just to have around the place as a kind of poster boy for, you know, commitment and here's what younger players should try to emulate. Um, if not, again, somebody who could play a bit part coming off the, the bench now and then. Um, and that's probably the, the best compliment that we could pay him. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. And I think um, uh, what was interesting, I think, last night, Marino, was uh, – Scotty Arfield didn't treat it as a retirement party uh, from Rangers. He was absolutely gunning to try and get a goal. And uh, maybe it was just me and, you know, maybe just how I was kind of looking at the game and stuff. But um, I also think that there was plenty of players out there trying to help Alfredo Morelos get a goal last night as well. Um, sadly, wasn't to be. Um, but I, I don't, I think Scott Arfield is one of these guys who, you know, you could play tiddlywinks with Scott Arfield. He'll be determined to win. Um <laughs> And I just thought it was really interesting last night to see how how close we were to being able to try and get my goal. He was really unlucky in that regard. But, uh, you know, exactly as Caroline's saying there, I think that he does go with the well wishes of all Rangers fans. Um, it probably was a coin toss between whether or not Scott Arfield or Ryan Jack would have signed a new deal. Um, I, I, you know, I, I think that there's, there's, there's definitely conversations to be had for both. But... Um, I'll come on to it in just a moment when we when we wrap up the tail end of the game. But uh, Caroline is right; he has scored some very important goals for us, and uh, and he has popped up in more than one occasion to uh, to to pull us out of bits of trouble. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that. Um, scoring against, um, as Caroline said, in the semi final of the final last year, and then even in the even against Celtic in the cup this year and um, when he was getting subbed on and everyone was like, oh no this isn't the right sub but he certainly tried his best when he came on and I think and as you said the same last night you know that's why we all love him. Yeah absolutely absolutely. Um, our field it should be noted as well went off for Leon King we'll talk a little bit about that in a, in a moment. Um, uh, some more changes uh, Ibrox on its feet um, for Scott Wright coming on to replace Alfredo Morelos. Uh, the Colombian prince, Marina, he, he makes his exit. Uh, unfortunately, and I think, and I, I do genuinely mean this, I know that, you know, as you've rightly said, people have been a bit divided in Alfie, but I am pretty confident to say almost everyone inside Ibrox last night wanted him to be able to try and get a farewell goal. He was choking to be able to try and get it. Sadly not to be. Um, however, I, I do believe... That, that you know, time will look fondly on Alfredo Morelos, um, and 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 it, it will be remembered about some of the calibre of goals he had. Our, our greatest ever European top goal scorer. Um, again, some some of the goals that he has scored for us has earned Rangers millions and millions of pounds. Uh, I still remember the the noise of the Legia Warsaw game when he scored that uh, that wonderful header. So many more we could talk about. And I think it was really nice for Alfredo Morelos to get that tribute last night from the Rangers crowd. And and again, I, I couldn't see a single person still sitting in their seat. Yeah, I know. I, I know he's not. I know a lot of it's his own fault. He's only got himself to play. But um, that, and that doesn't take away from everything that he did achieve with us and everything that he did for us. He was our, our talisman in, in European nights. I um, have so many happy memories at Ibrox. Uh, thanks to Alfredo Morelos. So he does deserve it. I, I, God knows what's happened. And I, I think that's what's 
what I'm really struggling with, with Morelos leaving, I, I know he's not playing well enough and I know he should go, it's time to move on, time to look to the future. It's different from McGregor because McGregor, he's at the end of his career, there's no going back. Morelos, it could have been different. It's what could have been. Um, and that that's hard to let go of. But yeah, it was. I was happy that he got a good reception. I'm surprised that he didn't smash in Sakala's goal, actually, just to get that. But yeah, I think. Yeah, <laughs> there's a part of me that wonders as to whether or not, you know, when we've all assessed some of his fitness issues, maybe a, a, a slightly fitter Alfredo maybe does finish that off. But <laughs> listen, you know, go back in time, you'll hear a pod that we've obviously discussed his fitness overall. But yeah, I think that you're totally right with that. Um, Caroline, the, the game was more or less kind of drawn out to it. And I think that we were getting ready to to say our final farewells to some of these guys. Hearts had diff, a, a different idea. And on the 93rd minute, uh, the third minute of three minutes of injury time, um, again, another calamitous piece of defending. Hearts are able to, to, to break through. It, it plays a little bit of kind of ricochet within the box, but a, a really terrible goal to lose. Um, no one's ever going to watch this game back, right? Let's be honest with it. But really disappointing to be able to try and lose that. And exactly as Menina said earlier on, Alan McGregor would not have wanted to concede a single goal, much less as concede two that were probably so poor in standard. Um, a, a small a, a small disappointment, but like you say, overall, we know that we're not really talking about mega competitive games or fixtures any longer. Um, just disappointing to lose that, especially with Celtic dropping points. We could have closed that margin at the top of the table just so it looked better aesthetically. Yeah, just uh, a gutter to lose that one right in the, in the, in the last kick of the game, pretty much. Yeah, and you kind of um, you hit the nail on the head where you said it was kind of, you know, a sequence of errors there. I think, you know, the, the very last option we had to clear was Jack and it just was not a fantastic clearance, basically, um, and puts us under unnecessary pressure at that point in the game. So it's almost inevitable that the fact that they did score, that they, you know, have probably more to play for than us and undoubtedly they wanted it a little bit more at that point in the game. So it felt a bit like a gut punch because I was fully ready to, <laughs> to have the game finish and acknowledge the players going out. And probably for a good couple of minutes, it just felt like an absolute damp squib. But, you know, credit to the fans. I think that everyone kind of dusted themselves off, reminded themselves, actually, this is of no true consequence to our season anyway. And they got back on track, which was to, um, you know, get into the mode of, of celebrating players who've, had fantastic careers at the club. So I'm glad it didn't ultimately ruin um, the kind of planned farewell, but it's just really typical. And it's it definitely feeds into the thought that everyone, I think, just can't wait for this season to be over. Yeah, Marina, I said to I, I said to the girl who sits next to me when, uh, when that Hearts equaliser went in, this place is going to empty. And I was really concerned that that was what was going to happen. I thought we wouldn't get that. Uh, acknowledgement to those players who were departing uh, and I thought it just would have just provided a bit of a kind of sour note to people who were still in the I was totally wrong I'm pleased to say because I actually think that the vast majority of people who could stay last night uh, they were able to stay last night and were always planning and staying they did stay they, we, we gave the players I thought a tremendous send off and one of the things that I want to also call out as well um, and, and, and I think something we had mentioned earlier on was there was a brilliant piece of video um, put together by uh, the the uh, Rangers media team, which showed the kind of goal montages. We did the guard the honour, uh, you know, the guys came out, they got their kind of plaudits. Alan McGregor looking incredibly uncomfortable, as you would expect. But um, we did a guard the honour for um, those players who were heading off. And as they were starting to do the tour of the ground and, you know, doing a lap of honour, if you can call a lap of honour when you don't win a single trophy in a season, there was some brilliant goals being showed by uh, shown by some of these guys over the years, over their time at Rangers. And what I will say is I think that that can be really, really easy to forget at times how important some of these goals were. So goals against Celtic for Ryan Kent. You talk about Borussia Dortmund. We, I mentioned earlier on Legia Warsaw. Some really, really pivotal goals. Um and I thought it was lovely to be able to see that montage put together because that was the reminder that I think Ibrox wanted um, just to just to see those guys um, in, the, in some of their finest moments. 
it was a wonderful montage. I wasn't ready to watch it yet. Um, and you might not be surprised, like we see the theme here. I did shed a tear at it. It was it was too much emotionally. Um just just remembering those fantastic every single one of those memories. Um, but they, they did an excellent job. What, what a send off, what a send off from the union bears, from all the fans, from the media team and from, from Beale and the team. It, it was <laughs> disappointing about the game. And like you say, and like Caroline said as well, we don't like to lose games, but we were able to, to dust ourselves off. Um, but yeah, that acts, I, even before the game, any montages, that I've seen on Twitter and social media of any of the players, especially McGregor and Morelos. Um, I've just been a bit too emotional to watch them right through. Um, but that one was sort of forced upon me and it was very emotional. Caroline, um, you are going to have to get her through some sort of counselling session or something uh, because I'm worried she's going to start crying now. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I'm beginning... Sorry, Marina. I was gonna say I'm beginning to feel really cold hearted because I wasn't actually that emotional watching it. I was more like, thanks for your service. It's a perfect time to leave. <laughs> What's next? I think I'm at that point in the grief cycle now. <laughs> Yeah, you've, you've, you've accepted it. You've accepted it. I totally get it. I totally get it. Um, so, as I say, Ibrox, I, I think, uh, you know, there was a, a great number of people who were able to stay and I think they, they did show their appreciation. I'm, I'm certain, uh, you know, without uh, providing a little bit of kind of un, unnecessary sugar on it, the, uh, the players were, were, were certainly very, very pleased that... Uh, um, you know the the reception that they got towards the tail end. Um, it's done. It's done and dusted. Uh, we move on to to St Mirren um, at the weekend, Caroline. Um, if yesterday was the kind of you know the last day of school, it just feels to me like a trip to Paisley um, at the weekend is gonna. Oh, it's just going to feel a bit like a chore. <laughs> it's going to feel like as if, oh, can we not just get it done and dusted? I think we've all said uh, in, in today's show, can we not just get this season done and dusted and wrapped up? Uh, let's just get this weekend over and done with and then let's start the rebuild. Yes and no. Um, so I would say when it comes to this season, I will be glad to see the back of it. That said, the way I'm considering this weekend is... It's another opportunity to see Todd Cantwell. <laughs> We're all, I think, growing into massive Cantwell fans now. So I'm looking forward to seeing him yet again. I'm also looking forward to what I hope will be another um, McCrory performance. I don't think we'll see McGregor again unless it is maybe for five minutes at the end of the game. But even then, I don't think so. Um, and I hope that we might see some of the youth players um, because I, I think it's appropriate given what Beale said as well in, in interviews that we do genuinely give them some meaningful time the ones that we think uh, might be making up again part of the wider squad next season and particularly Lowry I think he's been pretty patient this season he's had some frustrations himself with injury so I would really love for that to happen and if that's the case if we've got some of those fringe players uh, youth players um, and we've got some of our our kind of rising stars, um, then I think it's a worthwhile watch. It's not really going to uh, make or break your weekend, but I think it'll be, you know, it'll be nice, hopefully. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think, Marina, um, the reason as to why I say the rebuild will start pretty soon is because we've already preempted some of that because yesterday Rangers were able to announce uh, the pre-contract signing of, of Kieran Dowell from Norwich City. Um, Kieran Dowell joins us uh, on a three-year contract. Um, for, which begins on the 1st of July. So he has, has been announced, obviously hasn't joined the group yet. We've, we're going to be waiting a few weeks for that to, to uh, for him to come in and, and, and join whatever the squad happens to kind of be, uh, to, to look and feel like at that stage. Um, I mentioned this, Marina, because I think that whilst we've, we've been calm in terms of you know airing our frustrations as a support about what's kind of going on uh with with this season squad with some of those guys who are heading out the door those who are are, are, are either leaving or already left we need to be able to do business early we need to be able to start reassembling a squad that can compete for the the league um and and i'm really pleased to see that we're already moving in that direction i i think that there's a big part of this where it's not just michael beale looking to be able to do this with our uh, structural changes that have happened at board level as well 
I think that you're starting to see now people pulling together to make sure that uh, we've got the best chance possible to recover the uh, the title as well. Yes, through the tears last night, that was the, the comfort blanket, the sort of glimpse to the future um, with Campwell and Raskan playing so well, even Suter and Yilmaz. So there, there was sort of comfort in that, that um, the future does look bright. And judging, like, especially Campwell and um, Raskin, like, if these are Beal signings or like, if this is a standard, then I think we've got a lot to look forward to. But, yes, hopefully hopefully they come soon. Yeah, absolutely. And it's weird because I, I don't know if, you know, it's just me, but we haven't even finished the season yet. And for some reason, I still miss Todd Cantwell. <laughs> I, I, I miss everything about him. I don't know if it is, as I say, just me. Um he is making me question a lot of things about my lifestyle. Um, I, I do love him that much, but uh, if we can bring in players like that, I thought that Raskin played brilliantly last night. Again, I, I think we'll, we'll see more from him. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to, to to overload the guy in terms of expectations because we know that he's been working his way back up to fitness, etc. Uh, that guy, Caroline, is an absolute battler, and I think he will absolutely have the hunger of being able to make sure that we um, uh, we are certainly winning trophies next season. Yeah, and Beale's first two signings, as you said, have set the bar incredibly high. Uh, it must be quite daunting for him now over the course of the, the kind of close season to uh, match that success. Um, and it's it's been such a great call to bring them in early because it would have been <laughs> um, a really awful end to the season if we didn't even have those players probably dragging us through some performances and giving us a bit of enjoyment from matches. So we might have ground out results, but we actually had some decent performances, a bit of flair, and like Marina said there, a bit of hope for what a future team that's based around some of these key players could look like with some quality additions coming in. Um, and yeah, the, the passion, determination, and I think Raskan in particular has played down even the the quality he's been able to produce so far because he admitted himself you know um, he does have a a, probably still even a little bit to go in terms of fitness and sharpness so what he can go on to produce with a full pre-season settling in with his teammates it's quite exciting and Cantwell of course it feels like he's been here for years (laughs) you know he, he loves or appears to love being in Glasgow playing for the club um, he just gets it. He's so passionate. Um, he likes to wind up the right people as well at the right time. And I noticed you, you mentioned it earlier, Tammy. Morelos was straight over to Nesma, um when Cantwell scored his goal. But Cantwell wasn't far behind him as well, just with um, the, the final insult. So you can't ask for more than that. That's what fans want to see. Uh, they want to see someone that's incredibly passionate. And if they've got the skill to back it up, you know, yeah, I'm I'm fully on the Todd Cantwell <laughs> fan train. Yeah, I, I think I think most everybody is. He's made me realise that men can wear ribbons in their hair and still be absolute ballers. So if nothing else, thank you for that, Todd. Um, Before we wrap up, ladies, um, just a couple of little shout-outs from myself. Uh, Good luck uh, this weekend to the Rangers women's team. Uh, A really, really uh, tough weekend for them last weekend, losing out on the league to Glasgow City. Um, Fortunately, uh, they didn't, uh, despite their best attempts, equalise in the tail end of the game against Glasgow City, which would have handed Celtic the league. However, we've got the opportunity on... um, uh, Sunday coming uh, to win the, the Scottish Cup. Uh, the game is at Hamden. Tickets are available. Uh, they are on the Rangers website. Uh, £12 for adults and £6 for concessions. Ladies, I'm sure you'll join me um, in, in wishing the Rangers women's team all the very best. Uh, it, it has been a long, long, tough season. Um, and again, like I say, really disappointing for the girls uh, at, 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 on the uh, at the weekend uh, with Sunday's game and not been able to get it over the line but hopefully they've got a chance to rectify that and finish the season uh, with the Scottish Cup in the bank Yeah um, I was going to say there I don't think that the the ladies team did themselves justice last week, obviously they, they didn't get what they were ultimately looking for which was to win the league but the performance levels weren't what they were hoping for and certainly not what they've produced elsewhere across the season so I think this is a perfect opportunity for them to put a couple of things right and I'm sure they'll they'll do very well. 
Yeah, absolutely. Marina, as I say, a, a bit of a, a gutter for them. But, you know, again, you, you, there's going to be changes within that. We know, obviously, there's already personnel changes uh, within the management setup of the, the women's team. Um, you know, the, there's going to be rebuilds aplenty uh, at, at Ibrox this season. And again, like I say, we move on to, to whatever the next step of that will be with them. Yeah, best of luck to, to the ladies. And um, hopefully they can... Hopefully, yeah, do a bit, a bit better. It was. It's, it's such a hard way to to lose it, um, and I don't care what anyone says or what the media tried to portray. There is no way that they intentionally lost that. You could see they were trying, um, so it was so hard to lose like that. So yeah, hopefully they can. Um, well, hopefully this weekend's a bit better for them. Yeah, I, I kind of figured, I think that we were all kind of talking about it within our, our, our relative chats about the fact that if we can't win it, let's just make sure that Celtic don't. And uh, yeah, that's what I wanted. I think that the Rangers women didn't realise that. And then they almost, as I say, scored right at the, day, uh, right at the tail end. So yeah, it's funny how these things work out. So as I say, good luck to them. And uh, please feel free to go along and, and, and give them your support if you're, if, you're, if you're able to do so. I'm sure that they would massively appreciate it. Um, second last thing for me. Um, before we wrap up is just to say um, we are really, really excited uh, as Friday night is going to be our first ever live show at uh, New Edmondson House. Um, some really great talent on stage and David Edgar. Um, ladies, uh, we, we managed to sell this, this venue out in record time um, and all joking aside one of the best things I love about being able to try and talk about live shows is is how much Davey underestimates them because he was convinced that we wouldn't sell it sell it we did and we're just so incredibly fortunate to have such brilliant listener supporting us at every step um, it's going to be a great night I'm really looking forward to it and um, you know it's just going to be be brilliant to be able to see and, 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 and catch up with everyone again as well because it feels like it's been ages. I know what a venue because I, I don't know what the largest crowd you guys have played a kind of live show at but I'm guessing it couldn't have been more than maybe 250 so this is such a fantastic venue such a step up in crowd size a real show of support from the listeners which is incredible and yeah I'm really looking forward to it you wouldn't have guessed that maybe a month ago you'd be looking forward to a show like this given our season but um, we have some positives to look forward to and it's always great to hear from um, yourself so very much looking forward to it and Marina and I will be at the raffle stroke merchandise stand at, at periods throughout the night so uh, we'll be helping out there too oh listen th th I cannot explain to people if this is your first live show right I can only explain to people that we heartily encourage you to buy tat from the merch stands you will get to meet Caroline and Marina um, and Colin McMillan I mean I don't know you know, in what order of preference people would like to do that. I will leave it up to your discerning choice. <laughs> However, um, again, we absolutely love to make sure that if there's any crap that we can put a heart and hand logo on, we will find it and we will sell it. So as I say, come along and expect to shop. We will have a raffle uh, because it was almost mandatory that we have raffles at live shows. When we discussed it before, we had a really negative reception that we weren't going to do one. People were up in arms. So we are doing one. If you're coming along, um, you can pay cash or card for our uh, merch and raffle stuff as well absolutely cool to do that um however it is a cashless bar so you will need either your card or steal someone else's um to be able to buy for any of your drinks and stuff as well so if you're coming along please make sure and come along and say hello we love being able to do these nights it's a great opportunity for us to say hi to folk and uh, sincerely all joking aside uh, we wouldn't be able to do it without you if you'd like to hear more from heart and hand because this is our last extra show of the season david will be back with you on flagship as per usual you can jump over to our patreon site which is patreon.com forward slash heart and um, you're going to have a huge gap in your life as uh, as rangers are missing from it so make sure that you jump over there to get all of the latest news you will still get the daily update every single day from monday to friday we will bring you all of the latest transfer news and updates and when it's confirmed you will hear it on heart and hand first so please make sure and head over there for as little as two quid you can get up to five shows a day it is ridiculous value the most important thing um, i have to do as a close out extra for the season is to thank my two wonderful guests and probably i would say my best guests of the season thus far thank you so much ladies marina um 
I, I, you know, again, like I say, I, I don't know if you have any liquid left in your face from all the tears I'm certain that you have shed in the last 24 hours. But thank you so much for taking the time out um, from your misery to come and join us. No, thank you. It's been um, therapy there, some sort of catharsis. So um, thank you very much for having me on. Uh, it's always a pleasure to pod with both of you. And I'll see you on Friday. And uh, the future, Mrs Cantwell, with matching uh, hairstyles. Oh, <laughs> Car- Caroline Morrison. <laughs> You're such a flatterer, Cammy. But um, no, that was really enjoyable. And yeah, looking forward to seeing yourselves and any of the listeners tomorrow night. Thank you to the executive producers in London, Mr. Mike Lee and Paul Myers. Uh, look to, uh, forward to seeing you tomorrow, folks, if you can make it. If not, I'm sure we'll be doing future shows uh, soon. David will be back on Monday. Have a brilliant weekend. Enjoy yourselves and we'll speak to you soon. Thank you. <laughs>